Amber, you need to fire your new PR team as well. Cause like, no girl, no. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm the one they call Peachy Pie. I'm filming kind of late today because I tried to spend the day resting again, still recovering from this flu, whatever the heck it is. <sighs> but I wanted to do a stream already on Friday to talk about the statements that Amber Heard and Johnny Depp released um, on their Instagrams, right? So I can't find one from Johnny from before the trial, but I found one from Amber and oh dear. So Amber's post, which came out about eight weeks ago, says, I'm going to go offline for the next several weeks. As you may know, I'll be in Virginia where I face my ex-husband, Johnny Depp, in court. Johnny is suing me for an op-ed I wrote in the Washington Post, which I recounted my experience of violence and domestic abuse. I never named him. Rather, I wrote about the price women pay for speaking out against men in power. I continue to pay that price, but hopefully when this case concludes, I can move on and so can Johnny. I have always maintained a love for Johnny and it brings me great pain to have to live out the details of our past life together in front of the world. At this time, I recognize the ongoing support I've been fortunate to receive throughout these years and in these coming weeks, I will be leaning on it more than ever. With love always, A. Hey. Okay, while well, that doesn't seem like it's a problematic post in and of itself if you're facing a defamation case perhaps don't don't mention the name of the individual you know because um could be defamation amber and your team i know that during the course of the trial she did fire a previous pr team but girl no i i, I get the vibe where they're coming like hell has no fury like a woman scorned kind of thing but the issue here is that if you're going to make these kind of statements against somebody, um, you first of all have to be prepared for them to defend themselves, but also you have to be prepared to face repercussions for your actions. And if someone's suing you for defamation, maybe take a page out of Walt Smith's book and keep my wife's name out of your effing mouth. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, when I read this, I was just like, Amber is also maintained in a lot of different um, places where she was like, I never wanted to be a victim. Like pick one side, Amber, like really pick one side. Either you are a victim or you're not a victim. And then like, what are you if you're not a victim? Because you say you're not a victim and then you try and portray yourself as a victim. And it's so confusing. It's like polarizing because it's like, are you doing this because you're a victim and you want to protect other women? Or are you doing this because you're just really super pissed off at your ex? Because that's what it's coming across as when you're like, I'm not a victim, you know. So to me, her message, her entire message is so confusing and it's not very clear. And I don't think that this helped her case at all, you know. Okay, so we're going to take a look at Johnny's statement that he released once the verdict came out. Because they released the, their responses like lightning fast. Because let's be honest, these statements were drawn up way ahead of time by PR teams, okay? These statements are not necessarily personally written by Johnny or Amber. However, the statements were signed by them or written under the authority. So we have to keep that under consideration, which is also why I think Amber's statements naming Johnny is a huge problem, right? So here's Johnny's statement uh, that was released four days ago or so, okay? It says, six years ago, my life, the life of my children, the lives of those closest to us, and also the lives of the people who, for many, many years, have supported and believed in me were forever changed, all in the blink of an eye. False, very serious, and criminal allegations were levied at me via media, which triggered an endless barrage of hateful content, although no charges were ever brought against me. It had already traveled around the world twice within a nanosecond and it had a seismic impact on my life and career. And six years later, the jury gave me my life back. I am truly humbled. My dedication to pursue this case, knowing very well the height of the legal hurdles that I would be facing and the inevitable worldwide spectacle into my life was only made of the considered thought from the very beginning, the goal of bringing this case was to reveal the truth regardless of the outcome. 
speaking the truth was something that I owed to my children and to all those who have remained steadfast in their support of me. I feel at peace knowing I have finally accomplished that. I am and have been overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and colossal support and kindness from around the world. I hope that my quest of the truth be told will have helped others, men or women who have found themselves in my situation and that those supporting them never give up. I also hope that the position will now return to innocent until proven guilty, both within the courts and in the media. I wish to acknowledge the noble work of the judge, the jurors, the court staff and the sheriffs who have sacrificed their time to get to this point and to my diligent and, unwaver and unwavering legal team who did an extraordinary job in helping me to share the truth. The best is yet to come and a new chapter has finally begun. Okay? And then he says in Latin, uh, truth never perishes because he puts the English translation at the bottom. So if you take a look at Johnny's statement, you break down what he starts with. He says, this is what happened in the past. He does not name Amber. He does not name Amber. He just says that these are serious allegations that were laid out or thrown against me, even though there were no criminal charges that were brought against him. Johnny then takes the time in his little note here to say, thank you to all of the people who were part of this process and who helped him. And I really believe that Amber started to lose the favor of the jury at the point where she stopped respecting them. That's just my personal opinion though. However, irrespective of all that, she could have still released a statement to say thank you to the people who helped with this case. I'm not very happy with the outcome. Um, I will be appealing this, this case, but I am grateful to all of my supporters. And that would, I think that would have gone over so much better than what Amber actually posted which was this. The disappointment I feel today is beyond words. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence was still not enough to stand up to the disproportionate power, influence and sway of my ex-husband. Again, are you standing up for victims or are you standing up and trying to bully your ex-husband? What's happening, Amber? What's the point of this? Then she continues, I'm even more disappointed with what this verdict means for other women. It is a setback. It sets back the clock to a time when a woman who spoke up and spoke out could be publicly shamed and humiliated. It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously. What? I, I, when I read this, I was just so baffled because I'm like, how? How does this, how does this, this verdict that was in the favor of your ex, right? It was a whole court proceeding. Were you absent for the court proceeding? There was like a whole thing where there was a bunch of jurors. In other words, people from the outside of a situation listening to the situation unbiasedly as far as possible, making a decision about your case. And now you're trying to rope all victims into it. I, I, I was so confused by this because it's like, are you trying to fight against your ex-husband or are you trying to fight against the systems of abuse? What are you trying to achieve? And this for me is, is the thing that confounds that like everything about Amber. So like, what are you trying to achieve? What are you fighting for? Because if you're just fighting against your ex-husband, then nobody cares. We don't care about what happened. Because this is just an angry argument that has escalated between you and your ex. But if you're trying to stand up for victims, make that a clear statement. Don't just rope victims into it when you're losing. Like, really, don't just rope victims into it when you're losing. Because then it seems like you are using victims of abuse to strengthen your case and then it makes you seem a billion times more guilty in my opinion and then she said i believe johnny's attorney succeeded in getting the jury to overlook the key issue of freedom of speech and ignore the evidence that was so conclusive that we won in the uk you did not win in the uk the newspaper won against johnny's claim in the uk that i don't think that that was a victory for you but you do you honey but in all seriousness um, lots of lawyers have also said this freedom of speech does not include defamation and I have to stand by that a billion percent because anybody can say anything about somebody else but once you do something that is going to damage someone's career damage their esteem in the community and damage their name and the names of their children and other family members and friends who associate with them you have to be prepared to face some backlash because that is financial abuse you potentially financially abusing this individual right and then she 
uh, ads at the end. But I'm sad that I lost this case, but I'm sadder still that I seem to have lost a right I thought I had as an American to speak freely and openly. Once again, why are you roping all Americans into the situation? Why are you roping other people externally into your personal situation? It's not adding to your point, it's detracting from your point. At least this is what I believe about the statement that Amber listed. First of all, don't talk about your ex if your case was against your ex about defamation. Don't do that. We all know that the two of you were facing off each other. And we don't, we don't need the reminder that this is between you and your ex. Amber seems to be the person that keeps saying, I want to move on with my life. Johnny wants to move on with his life. And yet she's the one that keeps roping him into stuff, from what I can see, at least. I do not appreciate people making fun of Amber. I do not appreciate people trying to say that Amber needs to lose her career. Because that is society trying to abuse Amber, which is not going to solve the problem. Amber needs serious so that she can acknowledge that when a woman abuses a man, it still qualifies as abuse. This is the astoundingly obvious thing, which like really just slaps me in the face all the time when I think about the situation, is that Amber seems to think that women are the only ones that can be abused. And I know that's your say, <laughs> but she, she seems to portray events like only women can be hurt by men. Only women can be, um, their lives and their livelihoods can be interfered by, um, by men in positions of power. And like, it's, it's, it's alarming that the concept of abuse is only gendered in one direction in terms of the way she seems to portray it and in terms of the way she thinks about it. So I think that Amber should have left the statement to say thank you to everyone involved in the case, to thank her lawyers for their hard work, and to say that she was disappointed in the outcome, because there's nothing wrong with that, to say that she will be um, appealing the situation, and to say that she will continue to fight for the rights of women who have been disenfranchised or women that have come from relationships with people of power and have felt that they are undergoing continued abuse and all those kind of things. It's just too confusing and the message is not clear and it's not consistent. So it's less likely that someone will believe you when you want to talk out about abuse. And yeah, so that's what I have to say about the whole situation. I am quite happy with the verdict because the evidence showed that overwhelmingly overwhelmingly people all across the jury and across the world could agree that there was domestic violence in Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's relationship but things did not happen like one specific party claimed so I think that justice was really well served here um, I freaking love Morgan Tremaine's comments on Elaine going out and having um, interviews and stuff <laughs> after the case uh, with Amber but if Amber, if you really want the situation to like lie, then accept the verdict and move on. Support victims by supporting victims and not by putting them into your story, into your situation. Because that's just bloody selfish. Anyway, that's all that I have to say. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned to it for your scripture of the day. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, okay, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day further because you absolutely deserve it. Cheers.